seconds there. Well, let's now speak live to Juliet Tuma, who is spokesperson for UNRWA, which is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which provides humanitarian aid to Gaza. Welcome to the program. Um, first, what can you tell us about the, um, the situation in Gaza as regards humanitarian aid? What is your information on that? continues to worsen and continues to worsen by the hour. Um, every hour that passes, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza deepens. Uh, we are now hosting 700,000 people in our shelters. Our shelters are overcrowded. Uh, UNRWA continues to lose staff. So far, 72 of our colleagues have been killed since the war began in Gaza. When you say they are in shelters, what, what form do these shelters take and where are they? So most of these shelters um, we were using as, as schools before the war began because, you know, UNRWA is the only UN agency in the world that runs a fully-fledged school system. Uh, but sadly, since the war began, we've turned these schools into shelters and there are thousands, thousands of families in each of these schools, sometimes even more. The conditions in these schools are very, very bad um, because they are overcrowded and some people in some areas are sharing, hundreds of people, in fact, are sharing one toilet in, in these shelters. And they are in the north of Gaza or the south? They're okay. across the board in, in the Gaza Strip. They're everywhere, middle areas, northern Gaza Strip and in the south. And what about the flow of humanitarian aid? We understand from our correspondents that that is increased across the Rafa border, but of course that wouldn't allow it to get to the north of Gaza. It's still not enough. I mean, whatever is coming in on these trucks and the number of trucks and the, uh, the frequency of these convoys is not at all enough. I mean, it does not meet at all the overwhelming humanitarian needs on the ground in Gaza. Before the war started, and this is when there was no conflict, Gaza used to get on a daily basis 500 trucks. Now, on average, we're getting 13, 14, 15. It's a trickle. When we say it's a drop in the ocean, we mean it. And we know that Anthony Blinken is uh, the Secretary of State, the US Secretary of State, is going to be talking to Benjamin Netanyahu. And the uh, expectation is that he will ask for a, a cessation, um, a pause um, in the violence. What might that achieve? Well, it is time. It is overdue that there is a humanitarian ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. I mean, we, we're wondering and we're asking how many more how many more and how much more suffering and pain and loss? How much more? It is absolutely time for a ceasefire for the sake of humanity. Are you in any way sympathetic to the goal of Israel that it would like to see after the uh, devastating attacks that we saw in Israel? Would you, are you sympathetic to its goal to remove Hamas from the Gaza Strip? Look, what happened in Israel on the 7th of October is devastating. Is devastating. But the violence breeds more violence. And it is time for a ceasefire for the sake of civilians everywhere, everywhere. You've mentioned your staff and staff that you have lost, um, which now runs into uh, several, more than several. Sorry, say the question you again, You are please. losing many of your own staff in yeah. the course of this conflict. That must... Uh, be, of course, devastating for you, but also undermine your ability to assist? 72. 72. We lost 72, 72, including most recently um, a young lady in her mid-20s who had physical disabilities. She was displaced herself in the north of the Gaza Strip. She was a software developer. She was killed in Jabalia, in the north of the Gaza Strip, with members of her family. family. So now, uh, with uh, the, the situation that you've seen with your staff, how are you able to best assist within the Gaza Strip? How dangerous is it as an operation for you? Can you afford to continue to, provide, uh, to attempt to provide services there? Look, our operation in the Gaza Strip is the largest humanitarian operation uh, at, at all across the board in, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, our teams are themselves displaced. Our teams are themselves uh, grieving uh, because of loss of family members or friends or neighbors. 
but they are on the ground and they are helping and providing assistance and, and humanitarian support wherever they can to the Palestinian communities, wherever they can. But our supplies are running out and our efforts are being stretched. Uh, people are exhausted. Um, they, they are tired of, of, of this war and of the siege. And there's not enough supplies. And this is why we insist on getting in more supplies on a regular basis. And this is why we insist and we ask and we have been asking for weeks on end now for an urgent shipment of fuel, because without it, we are not able at UNRWA to continue to deliver. What sort of checks do the uh, aid convoys undergo before they cross um, uh, go across the Rafa crossing. How extensive are they, and is that the source of the problem? It's, it's very extensive, and and this whole operation is is geared to fail if we continue to run it the way we are running it right now. Um, so there are a number of issues with the way this operation is being run. First of all, the number of trucks on these convoys is is far far from enough, so that needs to increase. It needs to include include fuel as well. Um, and then it's a very cumbersome process, um, whether it's the inspection, whether it's the route, and that needs to be eased. And the convoys need to become much more regular. The flow must be far, far smoother. And they need to include the commodities that people need and that the humanitarian community inside Gaza, including UNRWA, needs. And that includes fuel, which we did not get since the 7th of October. It's been one month one month that not one drop of fuel has gotten into the Gaza Strip and we need it for humanitarian purposes. UNRWA needs it. Juliet Tuma, thank you very much indeed.